Hi everyone and welcome to part 2 of building and configuring your Linux NAS. In this episode, I will cover the software part starting right after the OS installation. Part 1 covered the hardware preparation and part 3 will cover power consumption and power saving. At the end of part 1, we completed the Debian base installation. From here we can start with some basics like allowing a regular user to use sudo. By default, we cannot log in over SSH with root, so we have to start by logging in with our regular user. Then, from there we can switch to root using su and the root password. Now that we have root privileges, we can install sudo and some additional tools. After that, we can simply add the regular user to the sudo group. Then we can switch to that user using su again and test if sudo works. As you can see, this works as expected. Now our preparation is done and we can focus again on our NAS. Let's have a look at how the disk configuration looks like at this point. We can see both our 4TB drives as SDA and SDB and SDC is the SSD which has three partitions already, boot, swap and root. Before we can use the 4TB disks, we need to create a partition table on them. We can easily do this using fdisk, using command G to create a new GPT partition table. Next, we can optionally create a new partition and set the type to Linux RAID as we plan to mirror the disks in an MDADM RAID mirror. When we're done, we can write everything to the disk using command W. We need to repeat the same steps for our second disk, SDB. Next step is to create the mirror from the two disks we just initialized. Before we can do so, we need to install the tool MDADM. MDADM is the main toolset for creating software RAID volumes on Linux. MD stands for multiple device. Now that we have MDADM installed, we can create the mirror using the following command. We need to specify the name of the virtual device, MD0, type of RAID, number of devices, and finally the physical device names. Once the array is created, we can check the details of MD0. We can see that our device devmd0 is in a good shape, it's resyncing currently. This can take some time, but we can already use the array. Just like with the regular disk or block device, we need to create a file system on our virtual device. We can do that using mkfs, and in this case I choose ext4. Once the file system has been created, we can mount it and try to create a test file on it. As you can see, this worked as expected. Now that we have a working setup, we need to make the changes persistent. For MDADM, you can do that by saving the config in mdadm.conf. And to make sure our device is available during boot, we can also update initRAMFS. So far, we have manually mounted our MD0 device to MNTNAS. Preferably, we'd like that to happen on boot and this is controlled in etcfs tab. We can add an additional line to the file containing the device name, the preferred mount point, file system type, and other options. After saving the file, let's check if everything is working by performing a reboot. Once rebooted, we can check if our MD0 device is available and mounted where we want it to be. Our disks have now been initialized, have been added to an array in mirror, and are being mounted on boot. At this point, let's start opening up services on the network. First, let's configure a static IP address. This is done by editing etc network interfaces. We will enable Eno1 our network interface on boot and configure it with a fixed IP, a slash 24 netmask, gateway and DNS address. After saving the file, we can activate the changes by restarting networking. Obviously, we lose our SSH connection as we change the IP address. After reconnecting to the new static IP, we see all worked fine. Now that we have the IP set as static, let's expose our storage on it for Windows machines. 
We start by installing the Samba packages. Sharing between Windows machines happens typically with the SMB protocol. Samba is the set of tools under Linux that implements this protocol. Since we previously configured the static IP, we will not get NetBIOS info from DHCP, so we can choose no here. Once Samba is installed, let's copy the default configuration to a backup file. Next, we can edit smb.conf and replace it with a minimal version. In the global config, I choose to use a minimum version of smbv2. I advertise my machine as NAS and choose to save the logs under var log. For the share itself, which I call data, I set the path to a subdirectory of mnt NAS. This is where we mounted our mdadm RAID array and I make this accessible only to one user, Jens D. In case you set this up yourself, you will need to customize this. The easiest is to start simple, then expand it until it fits your needs. Once we have saved the configuration, we can restart SMBD to apply the changes. After that, we need to enable our user to be used for Samba and set a separate password for it. This can be done using the SMB password utility. Important as well, and often the cause of access issues with Samba, is that the user needs permission to access the files on the disk as well. If you configure multiple users for access, you will need to make sure the group permissions and most likely also the UMask is set correctly for everyone to access each other's files. Finally, we can test access to our share from Windows. We can use backslash backslash IP or hostname, then open the share. If it's the first attempt, credentials will be asked. We can enter the user and password we specified in smb.conf and the smb password utility. Let's test this and try to see if we can read, write or delete a file. Looks like this worked just fine, and this means we can access our 4 terabyte MDADM mirror from Windows now, officially turning this machine in a network attached storage device. This concludes the software part. Stay tuned for the third and last part where we look into how we can reduce power consumption. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you liked it, please put a thumbs up. And if you are interested in this or similar content, don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel. I also have a Linux related blog, jensd.be, for which I provided a link in the description. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you back here soon.